Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the sixth monthly clinical meeting of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. We are here today with the Sri Lanka College of Anesthesiologists and Intensivists of Sri Lanka. We are privileged to have an audience here at the SLMA today and uh, to speak a few words of welcome on behalf of the Sri Lanka Medical Association, I would like to invite Dr. Sarat Gamini De Silva, Council Member of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. Thank you, Harry. And to all of you, uh, Dr. Mirandini Maniga Sekar, the President of the College of Anesthesiology and Intensivists, Dilrukshi and Anjali, the two speakers today, and ladies and gentlemen. Yes, indeed, uh, this, this month's uh, monthly clinical meeting, and we have got a very, very appropriate, very timely topic at a time when the country is supposed to be bankrupt and when resources are restricted in every field, and these restrictions will be felt mostly in our services, healthcare services, which is supposed to be free. It will not be felt to the same extent in the free living areas. So it's quite important that we all are very conscious of this uh, situation where we have to save everything as much as possible and make sure that waste stage is cut down to a minimum. So this discussion will be on driving sustainable practices in healthcare services, paving the way for a greener future. So this is going to be like a, I was told by a, like a coffee table discussion between the two ladies. So there we'll have to pay our attention to that. And later, if there are any questions, there will be time for that also. So may I invite uh, Dr. Dilrukshi Perra and Dr. Anjali Di Silva to the podium, please. Thank you. So actually, I know it's really heavy, uh, really heavy last week, and it released the floods and landslides during the last week. Exactly. Last month was scorching, isn't it? And I know some part of the country experienced uh, droughts too. Yes, of course. I know it's, uh, it's every guy is like that. I think the world is uh, falling apart. Do you know, actually, I think that as healthcare workers, we also contribute. And uh, you know that we have taken the old like doing the harm. Actually, we are causing harm to the world as well. So last week, actually, I came up with a nice video. Shall we check the video?
ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆಂಟ್ single surgery did you know that 30% of hospital waste comes from uh, operating theaters alone so that means more than one third almost one third of the waste comes from operation theaters okay all right that's huge amount okay so uh, when we think about just uh, the linen and detergents it contributes massively to the hospital waste it includes bed linen hospital gowns right drapes theater staff gowns scrubs gloves caps and masks 
Actually, if you think about in Sri Lanka, luckily we do not use uh, disposable gowns and scrubs uh, yeah. because we can't afford it maybe. But uh, think about uh, the way we use, uh, we have to use detergents and chemicals. So we have to dispose those things uh, into the environment. And to clean it, we use electricity as well. So to yeah, to autoclave. So uh, even though we do not use disposable uh, linen, we contribute to the environmental harm in the, in, by doing so by uh, detergents and the chemicals. That's true. Yeah. I have noticed you have been using a nice looking cap for the last few years. Actually, they are cute, no? Yeah. They so are. you can make them custom made to your attire, maybe. So you can order them online. Yeah, I should do that. It's more environmental friendly, isn't it? But sometimes I think it's just one disposable cap. Mm. But again, if we all think that way, just imagine how many caps we'll be using for a single period a day. It's my fault that I still use disposable caps. If you want, I can give you the contact information. Sure, please. Thank you. Uh, and actually, if you do that, you can contribute to the environment sustainability because some studies have shown if you use reusable mm -hmm. caps and reusable linen, you have you can cut down the in the the waste products and sustainable process up to fifty percent. Uh, if you use rather than the, if you if you use the reusable things rather than going for a, a disposable things. That's true. And the other major thing that uh, my that I worry is about the plastics. I really feel bad how much plastic that we use for a single patient. So, uh, because we are involved in anesthesia, yes. if a patient comes to a theater for a procedure, think about like this. So, one cannula at least, yeah. uh, IV drip set, a few bottles of saline, maybe a few syringes. Yes, and gloves for us. Just imagine how many pairs. And maybe packing? Yeah. Have you heard of, of a, a term called cradle to grave time? No, what's that? Cradle to grave time means actually a product from its production to end mm -hmm. disposal. So actually it means uh, from the manufacture, from the raw products, to the end. So it involves uh, the transportation, yeah. manufacturing site, packing, and disposal. All right. From start to end. Yes. To grade. yes. Start to end. So to mitigate the impact of all these steps, the main thing we can do is reduce, reuse, and recycle. Yes. So reducing uh, the usage and reuse as much as you can and recycle, recycle. at the end. Yes. And by the way, that we uh, we talked about about thirty percent of the waste comes from the ORs. Yeah, and from that, twenty five percent, that is one fourth, comes from anesthesia. Really? Yes, the main contributors are the anesthesia gases. Oh, really? Yeah, there's been a discussion about this greenhouse effect of anesthetic gases for the past few decades. Yeah. Since we studied it long time ago, I find it a bit difficult to recall all the mechanisms of greenhouse gases, global warming, and also the global warming. And uh, the problem is like green, very simple. In simple term, greenhouse gases, as an example, is like carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. methane, all of anesthesia gases. Mm -hmm. So they are re, um, infrared active. Mm -hmm. So they can uh, retain and re-emit infrared uh, radiation. Mm -hmm. So by doing so, they will increase the uh, Earth's temperature. That is the very simplest explanation of the greenhouse gas. Yes. And uh, when you explain the greenhouse gases, there's a term for global warming potential. Do you know what it is? I can't exactly remember. Shall we Google? You can see. Yes. So it says global warming potential is a measure of how much heat a greenhouse gas traps in the atmosphere over a specific time period, usually 100 years when you compare it to carbon dioxide. 
So you are, you are comparing it carbon dioxide over a period of 100 years. 100 years. Okay, all right. All right, okay, got the point. Mm -hmm. And there's something called uh, carbon dioxide equivalent. It's another term. Yeah. So it's the unit that quantifies the impact of a given amount of greenhouse gas in terms of the amount of carbon dioxide that would have the same warming effect over a specific period. So okay. if we think about seberfluorine, yeah, so seberfluorine uh, has actually GWP, global warming uh, potential of 130. Mm -hmm. That means it, it is uh, 130 times potent like carbon dioxide. Yeah. Okay. And if you use a bottle of seberfluorine, that is 250 ml of seberfluorine, it produces the effect of uh, like carbon dioxide effect of 49 kilograms of carbon dioxide, the same effect, uh, like, so like, let's like rephrase it like this. So if you use seberfluorine 250 ml, okay. it gives the same effect of carbon dioxide 49 kilograms. All right, so I get it. So if you use the 250 ml bottle of seberfluorine, yeah, it will give the same effect as 49 kilos of carbon dioxide yes to the earth to the earth in terms of global warming yes so we talked about greenhouse gases so what would be the what do you think about the characteristics of uh, gases that have global warming potential so the first thing when you want to call it as a greenhouse gas, it should absorb infrared radiation. Yeah. So absorption in infrared radiation is the first thing that yes. determines the global warming. It, they should absorb the radiation, yes. And the second thing is the atmospheric lifetime. How long the gas remains in the atmosphere is very crucial. So longer they remain, uh, the, the action is more. Action is more. All right. And then the radioactive efficiency. So that means the effectiveness of a particular gas mm -hmm. absorbing and re-emitting IR. All right. So if a particular gas has a higher radiative efficiency means okay. the gas can trap more heat per molecule and it causes more greenhouse effect. All right. Okay. So, and you talk about uh, the lifetime of a molecule mm -hmm. in the atmosphere. So what determines that? So it determines by the chemical reactivity. So the molecules that are chemically reactive can be broken down very quickly mm -hmm. by reactions with the other atmospheric uh, molecules like hydroxyl ions uh -huh. and ozones. All right. If they can get uh, reactive quickly, mm -hmm. so the lifetime is short. Okay. And the next thing is the photolysis. All so right. some molecules can be broken down by sunlight. Okay. So if they're susceptible uh, to photolysis, okay. again, the lifespan is short. All right. And the other thing is the removal process and solubility. So gases that are more soluble in water can be removed more quickly from the atmosphere oh. via rain and snow. Okay. And they can get deposited in oceans and other ecosystems as well. Okay, all right. So uh, if you think about the gases that we use day to day, like like isofluorine, seawater, so if you compare, so I, I have found a nice uh, oh, yes. graph. So according to this, if you consider the desflorate, mm -hmm. it, it has a lifetime in the atmosphere about 1.1 years. So roughly one year. It has a GWP of 130 and carbon dioxide equivalent of 49. So I have given you the exam, yes, 49, 49, kilos. 49 kilos. And it has a driving equivalent of four miles. So it's more environmental friendly. friendly. So if you consider this flow okay. rate, it has a lifetime in atmosphere about 14 years. So if you use this flow rate now, it will remain in another 14 years. So long time. And GWP uh, for this flow rate is 2,540. Wow. That is the long, the highest among the gases that we use. Yeah. And the carbon dioxide equivalent is 893. And the driving equivalent is nine, one, the 199 miles. So that means you can drive more than like even beyond Hambantota. That is about 190 kilometers, not miles, miles. even. 
okay it's more than that so if you consider nitrous it is it has the longest lifetime in the atmosphere mm -hmm. about 114 years mm -hmm. But GWB is less than that, uh, you know, uh, when you compare the disfluorine, 298, carbon dioxide equivalent is 1,300. So, sorry, 1,013. So, if you consider the disfluorine and nitrous are uh, uh, the first first. compared to the ISO and CO2. So, how do halothane, isofluorine, desfluorine, and sevofluorine have different atmospheric lifetimes? Actually, uh, they mainly because of their atom, the chemical chemical structure and their mm -hmm. atomic bonds. Because of that, they can retain their, uh, they can absorb the infrared and the stability, mm -hmm. uh, the the amount that they can absorb, retain, and re-emission. Those are the things that will depend on how they act. All right. Okay. It all depends on their chemical structure. Since we have talked about nitrous, uh, so they also, other than the greenhouse effect, they also can uh, uh, has a potential to deplete the ozone layer, actually. Mm -hmm. Not up to the level of uh, chlorofluorocarbon, but the amount oh, that, yes. So, uh, they can uh, the, the amount of uh, nitrous oxide released to the environment is huge, mostly from anesthesia practices as well. Yes, yes. But what they do is when it's released to the atmosphere, they were broken down by ultraviolet radiation mm -hmm. to nitric compounds. So they can go and uh, break down the ozone uh, layer. Mm -hmm. uh, not that is the simplest explanation. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, how can we minimize uh, this environmental effect from our state? So, oh, as anesthetists. As anesthetists. Yes, anesthetist, uh, we can avoid or minimize the use of desfluorine and nitrous. Yeah. So, some countries actually have banned use of uh, desfluorine. Uh, I think uh, Scotland is the first country to ban use of desfluorine in 2023. And uh, since 2024 beginning, NHS uh, England has also Thank restricted uh, their uh, use for um, uh, occasions, only when they need it. They are switching off to other gases. And uh, if we, in Sri Lanka, actually, we are not using this floor in, in our government hospital as I haven't seen. Uh, using this flooring at all and nitrous usage so we are using nitrous as a driver uh, driving gas and to <clears throat> increase the mac as well so if we can you uh, switch it to uh, air yeah. so it, it will be uh, beneficial to our environmental as well uh, and uh, as uh, to labor pain, uh, nitrous oxide as internox. We are mm -hmm. not using much as in other countries. In UK, they UK, use, quite, they a use uh, quite a lot, but not in Sri Lanka mm -hmm. as much as not as. The other thing is using the low flow anesthesia. So low flow anesthesia up to the, the fresh gas flow up to uh, one liter or be, even beyond that, if you have the facilities, mm -hmm. if you can do that, you can contribute to uh, the sustainability Sustain. and the environment. Thing. The other thing is not using gases, but to go for other alternatives like Jiva and Regenus. But there are some controversies using those things, but they are more environmental friendly, according to some, rather than going for the gases. Yes. I love blocks because we use only one nail and one syringe. Yes. It's quite environmental friendly, yes. isn't it? Yeah. So, can you use low flow in any situation? Actually, uh, to go for uh, change. The, so if you want to go for low flow, you have to have certain requirements. So you need to have uh, anesthesia machines. Uh, 
and you have to have certain monitoring conditions like gas modules, uh, entitled gas concentrations, gas analysis, and you have to have experienced people for that mm -hmm. and education, consistency as well. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, not related to that uh, directly, but uh, sometimes you need, you need uh, soda lime mm -hmm. to encircle system for that. And uh, you need soda lime to absorb carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you change carbon dioxide um, mm -hmm. to, so, sorry, so, um, soda lime to uh, only when the color indicator is changing. Mm -hmm. But rather than doing that, if you go for the uh, capno indicator, using capno indicator to change the soda lime, it will be more environmental friendly. Okay. You got my point, no? Yes. Okay. There might be some unused soda lime. Yes. Yeah. Remaining. Yeah. So, uh, even though how much we try to go for low flows and other things, there will be some amount of gases releasing to the environment. What we can do for those things? Yes. So, we use our scavenging system, but still we release the gases to the atmosphere. So if we can capture them through the scavenging system, either disrupt them or maybe we can store and reuse it. Oh, reuse it. Yes. That's interesting. So actually in Sweden, they use activated charcoal and metal organic frameworks. Oh. So what they do is they capture uh, via the scavenging system All right. and then they, uh, they destroy them or purify it and then uh, store it for reuse. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. yes. Okay. And also, same in Sweden, they have rooftop installation in the maternity wards mm -hmm. to destroy nitrous oxide. So okay. that will prevent releasing nitrous oxide to the environment. Okay. But to use all these, you need uh, low flows because otherwise high flows will dilute the gases and reduce the efficiency of these systems. Okay. All right. So they have limit limitations as limitations well. Limitations as well. All right. Okay. So uh, I talked to you about TIVA. So TIVA is good, but I told you that there are some controversies. Mm -hmm. So one of the controversies that TIVA is good in the means of like global warming potential, warming potential is low. But the other controversy is it can has a, it has an impact on marine life. Why? Because it can get accumulated and it can decrease its pH. Mm -hmm. and uh, in the marine life. So low pH can um, like can be harmful to plankton, uh, whale, and fish. So if this trend, the current trend continues, uh, by 2070, one of the study has shown by 2070, they can go to extinction even. It's very dangerous to marine. Yeah, so... But this low pH also can favor one uh, the uh, some organisms like some planktons, which can produce toxic organisms, uh, toxic toxins, uh, which can produce toxins to the atmosphere, and bacteria. So, TIVA, in one way, can harm the useful organisms. In the other way, they can uh, produce um, new organisms or the promote new organism that can harm uh, the atmosphere. So there are problems as well. So I think, as you said, maybe regionals are the best option. Of course, yes, yeah. So when you say uh, propofol get accumulated, yeah. so I wonder we inject uh, propofol to patients. Yeah. So how can it get accumulated in oceans? So actually, some studies, uh, they have done some studies, they show even though we draw propofol, up to 30 to 50% of drawn propofol, drawn propofol is discarded maybe to the sinks, or to the general waste, they get accumulated to the soil or the water. Oh, the half, yeah, that's a huge amount. And uh, the half-life of the propofol is about one year. 
Mm. So it remains in the environment for quite long. Yeah. And the other thing, apart from that, for the cultivation, uh, the, the soya bean is the the raw material, yes. isn't it? For the cultivation, they do the, uh, they do a, uh, deforesting like in the amazon forest mm -hmm. so it also uh, contributes to the uh, environmental hazards yes i have seen in some hospitals they use this twin ml protocol and yes and they use it for just one patient they don't use the remaining protocol yeah uh, for the next patient and they just discard it yeah that's the thing it's a waste and also causes environmental pollution yeah so as with proper fall, soya bean serves as the raw material. Yes. Similarly, every healthcare product requires electricity, water, both of which have very like huge environmental cost. Therefore, the reusable items are preferable yeah. to disposable. All right. Yeah. So, so how can we be more environmental friendly with electricity? So one thing what we can do is we can move towards the renewable uh, electricity mm -hmm. rather than depending on the fossil electricity. So like uh, renewable in energy means uh, water, like hydropower, solar power, wind power. Mm -hmm. You can depend on your geographical uh, area. Mm -hmm. Hambantut, if you take Hambantut, I'm very fond of Hambantut because I was uh, in Hambantut last weekend. So you can use uh, solar, mm -hmm. uh, solar power and hydropower. I have seen some hydropower meals, hydro meals there. So hydropower. And that is one example. And you can use your own, uh, own uh, uh, power sources for your own hospital. healthcare hospital. Mm -hmm. Yes. Example, solar power. Yeah. Ambantota Hospital can use solar power and uh, the, the wind power both. Yes. If, but the only thing is the cost. Yes, in the countries like us, cost will be high, but yeah. in the long run, yeah, it will be very beneficial. Yeah. The other thing I would like to talk about is reducing the unnecessary usage. Hmm. We can easily do that. Yes. So one thing is the turning off the lights, unnecessary lights, in the theaters, in the wards, to switching off the fans and other yeah. things. One easy thing, and going back to the LED lights other than the normal lights. Mm -hmm. And if you think about the theaters, switching off the anesthesia machines, scavenging systems when you are not using it. Okay. And uh, you know that in theaters, when your theaters are in use, you have to change the theater yeah, about 20 times uh, per hour. In uh, ICUs, it's about six times per hour, air changes. But if you are not in use, you can reduce that 20 times per hour to six times per hour. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge change. Okay. And the theater ambient temperature is about 18 to 23. Sometimes we think lower the better. It's, it's not. It's not. So achieve going back to those things, you can reduce the electricity. I think the same goes for the water. Yes. Yeah. So when you talk about surgical hand washing, yeah. if we use uh, traditionally manually operated sinks, for one person, we waste about 20 liters of water. That much? Yes. Because you just keep open the tap and then you wash, scrub, and then let the last thing you close it. I never thought of that. So we can consider installing motion sensor taps to reduce water waste. Okay. And the next thing is steam sterilizers. The large steam sterilizer, they use about 1,000 liters for one cycle. Oh. So we can optimize the efficiency by waiting till the full capacity is met to run the cycle. Okay. And now the interesting thing is, in some countries, they use uh, desalinated water instead of fresh water. Oh. They use sea water. Okay. And they desalinate it and use instead of fresh water. Oh, so right. I wonder whether we can do that too. Maybe initial cost again. Maybe very high. Yeah, but other than that, we have ocean around our around country. Us. Yes. So, Nilukshi, what's the good way to use uh, transportation to reduce environmental pollution? So again, we most of the time we use fossil mm -hmm. fuel. So 
we can reduce that or stop it because electrical vehicles are now coming up. So we use it for our own purpose, but we can use it for public transportation, maybe even for ambulances. Oh, yes. I have seen that in uh, the in the NHS, uh, the future plan, green NHS plan. So they have incorporated that into their plan as well. So we can think, yes. Mm -hmm. So we can think about that and encourage people for active transport rather than passing transport. Do you know what is active transport? Is it walking? Yes, walking is active transport and also cycling. Oh, yeah. So that is for shorter distances, maybe. That is good for your health as well, yeah. isn't it? So active transport. And also promote uh, public transport rather than coming uh, one person in one, one vehicle. Uh, difficult to do so, but... I do that. Uh, yeah, I so, use public transport. Yes. I think that is very good yeah. yeah, if you can do so. And the other thing is uh, to share the... So if you are, in, if you are based in a, a, like a, a hospital far away from Krambo and you have to get down some medication from MST mm. and you are sending a vehicle. Yes. Only for that, maybe you can ask from other nearby hospital they whether they do need any other medications as well. Then you can like collectively send the vehicle and get the share, share, share the vehicle, vehicle. Mm -hmm. rather than sending only for yourself. Yes. So you can actually uh, uh, reduce the carbon dioxide emission and other things. Okay. The other thing is uh, relocate yourself. Uh, uh, to uh, somewhere near your uh, working place. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we locate in Colombo, but our working place in uh, Anuradhapura, Polonnaru is somewhere far away. So we have to travel about 100 to 200 kilometers far away. So uh, we don't have any options in Sri Lanka, maybe, but if we have an uh, option, that is good way. So we will not waste our uh, resources. Yes. The other thing would be um, telemedicine, telehealth. Mm -hmm. So for pre-op health, maybe uh, clinics, you can use that. Yes. Maybe in the future. Yes. Uh, that is one thing. And for administrative and uh, academic purposes, you can have... Uh, well, Zoom meetings and other things rather than coming. I don't know how effective is this, but you can try those things I rather think, than traveling. I think one good thing that COVID has done is uh, having yes. this teleconference. Yes, we are having today's Yes. So uh, how much we try, there is some amount of wastage produced by the healthcare services. Yes. So we have to take measures to minimize the waste that we produce. Mm -hmm. Can you think about ways how we can reduce the waste that mm -hmm. we produced? Yes. So to reduce waste, mm -hmm. I think the main thing we can do is mm -hmm. to reduce the usage. Yeah. So they talk about Ray Dorman Hospital. Ray Dorman Hospital. Ray Dorman Hospital. Right. So they talk about uh, when to use gloves and when not to use gloves. Oh, okay. So to use gloves, uh, you oh, nasal no, plants, bang, then again, no, when you are doing an invasive procedure. Okay. So when you are handling cytotoxic medications, like cancer medicines. Cancer. Okay. And then gloves off when you should not. Use gloves. Okay. When you are examining the patient, if the patient has an intact skin and also you have intact skin, all right, you can uh, you use should your, you can your, just use, use your hands all right. without using gloves. And also routine observations and interestingly, when you are uh, giving injections, subcutaneous, intradermal, or intramuscular, they say we can just use our bare hands without using gloves. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, it's a new oh. thing, isn't it? All right, okay. So yeah. the other thing I can think of is maybe the rich countries, the fortunate countries can donate their new stuff to developing countries like IJS, LMA, Zambuscopes, 
All right. We get donations like that. So yeah, we get, yeah. All right, yeah. And we are like very, we like to uh, like order new machines. Yes, we like, yeah. Get. I also new like, yeah. machines, new ultrasound machines, sophisticated stuff. Yes. But rather than like ordering new machines, if we can upgrade and update or repair our old machines. That we have. Yeah. Okay. So we can reduce the wastage, isn't it? Yeah. And the one I like is the paperless documentation. So you can go for digital documentation rather than using all papers, be digital papers and all. So, so you can get rid of a lot of which BHD is. Okay. Yes. And the other thing is you can reduce the unnecessary investigations and medications. So for that, we need to have a protocol and policy. Yeah. And to minimize uh, medically ineffective surgeries and speci especially uh, the unnecessary critical care admissions. What do you think? Yeah, sometimes we get admissions to ICU, some unnecessary admissions. If a patient comes to the ICU, so you have to, oh, starting from the paper, as you say, so paper, linen, drugs, everything, electricity, electricity everything, everything yeah, that, that we have talked about, everything is a waste. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the other thing is avoid routine opening of consumers in an emergency surgery. So thinking that we might need it, we just open it and we don't use it. So it's oh. just a waste and you have to again sterilize it or replace so it. So that means without even need for that instrument, you open it thinking that you, you might, might need, need it. it. Oh, okay. All right. And stock only essential items to reduce the expiry of drugs and consumables. Hmm. We like to just keep stocks Yes, just as much as possible. Okay. Yeah. All right. But there's a risk of getting expired. Isn't yeah, it? then you we have to waste. waste. Okay. And uh, this suggest uh, to get involved with the anesthesiologist and intensivist in hospital product evaluation and procurement. Oh, interesting. Uh, to ensure the use of environmental friendly products. Oh, okay. We have to... Send that to the, I think, Ministry of Health. Yeah. Okay. And I think for the disposal of waste, if we have like a sorted system, mm -hmm. color-based system, so you can do, if you can collect those like, like glasses, plastics and other things in separate way, you can recycle them and reuse it. Yes. That's one thing we are like, isn't it? Yeah. So I saw in the uh, UK, yeah. they have uh, made homes. Yeah, homes? Yeah, homes. Okay. With the uh, disposed uh, PPEs. Ah. Yeah. Okay. That's All interesting. right. Interesting. Yes. All right. So actually, that, that we have talked about a lot of things now. So when we talk about these things, I have gone through lot of governments, a mm -hmm. uh, lot of organizations who are interested in uh, environment sustainability, they have laid some uh, declarations, guidelines, how to minimize those effects. Mm -hmm. So European Society of Anesthesiology and Intensive Care, ESAIC, mm -hmm. that they have uh, made a declaration, Glasgow Declaration, mm -hmm. uh, which is... Uh, officially signed in 2023 June. It is actually specific for uh, anesthesiology and intensive care. Uh, so they have made some recommendation for theaters and ICUs, which were actually we have already talked about, I, but I, if I uh, were to summarize those things, they are discouraging nitrous oxide and desflurane and to go for other gases if possible. And uh, and if you can go for intravenous anesthesia and go for low flow anesthesia and if you can go for lower possible 0.5 liters per minute if you can. And uh, consider stockpiling only emergency drugs as you said. And uh, if you are going for, if, if the ORs are not in use, six air changes per hour mm. and ambient temperature 18 to 23 and the uh, 
humidity, relative humidity is about 30 to 60. And uh, about the hospital own renewable energy, as we talked about earlier, and changing to LED bulbs, switching off the unnecessary things, and encourage to use hand water resources to uh, like uh, motion sensors, sensors and use reclaimed water that uh, rather than going for drinking water for the purposes for cooling systems, uh, warming circuits and toilet flushing. Oh, yeah. So use for those instances, use reclaim. That's good. Yeah. So um, I saw the other countries, NHS and also other organizations like WHO, they have their own guidelines to minimize become more greener in future. So I'm very proud to say our own colleague, uh, Dr. Vishaka Karna, who is at Amrathpur Hospital, yeah. she has started uh, this uh, sustainable operating theatre project in Sri Lanka. Anuradhapura. Anuradhapura. It's very nice. It's very nice. Yeah. And uh, well, there's another thing that Sat Kamak Penuing Kasak. Yes. Uh, so they uh, do this project as well. They uh, plant a small uh, tree for an each and every patient who undergoes uh, surgery. But that means that uh, they, are country, they are trying to uh, over, overcome Come the... To a zero uh, uh, balance. Zero oh, okay, balance. that's nice. So, uh, Dilukshi, what countries actually contribute to the global carbon emission mostly? Actually, if you talk about country-wise, the China has the most, uh, like, is the highest in the category wise and uh, closely behind is the united states mm -hmm. and if you go for a like a per capita mm -hmm. what do you think is the china no it's the middle eastern countries mm -hmm. yes then comes the canada then the usa then after that is china any idea about sri lanka what is the number so I'm quite sure it's somewhere less than one percent. Yes, it's about 0.79 as per 2022. Compared to that, US is about 14 point something. Middle Eastern countries about 23 or 21 something. So we are yeah, per capita. So we are about 0.79. So we are uh, 45. So uh minimize iron mantle pollution. So the main things that we can do are the, this concept called six R's. Okay. So the first thing is rethink. That is the most important first step. Okay. Rethink. You stop and think how can we become more green? How can we do these things more green? Are there any alternatives? All right. Okay. So for an example, if you can, if you want to give uh, general anesthesia for a patient, maybe you can do it at the regional. All right. So block, block. maybe upper limb uh, surgery rather than giving for a general anesthesia. Can we do it with a block? Yes. Okay. So breathing. And the second thing is refuse. Say no to things that we do not need, such as some investigations and drugs, as we discussed earlier. Gloves? Gloves. Yeah. Yeah. And the next thing is to reduce, reduce the use. Okay. So that also we discussed earlier. Yeah. Draw drugs only when needed and uh, reduce the use of electricity. Yeah. Turn off the lights when it's not needed. And then the other thing is reuse. Go for disposables. Go for reusables. Reusables, yes. the disposable. Yeah. yeah. So even for laryngoscopes, here we always use uh, reusables. Reusables, yes. But if we can use rechargeable laryngoscopes, blades, and the, the batteries, yeah, batteries. rechargeables. So we can uh, reduce the use of batteries, batteries as well. And then recycle, collect separately paper, plastic, degradables, and then you can recycle them. And the other thing is research. So a lot of researchers are currently going around the world about TIVA. And whether the TY is good or whether the gases are good, like regionals are, are good. are good. Like so, they all have their own pros and cons. So the researchers are going, going on. 
So actually, Adit, so we talked about these things as healthcare personnel. Mm -hmm. So other beyond that as a normal human being. So we can do a lot of things as well. Yes. So we talked about those things, but if you want to have a meeting with our friends rather than going and have, have chat so like, like this. So we can have a like a like a maybe a Zoom call or a WhatsApp or a something like that, video mm -hmm. call, other than meeting in person. Yes. Use public transport like you or yourself, yes. not by not like me, maybe. And apply ourselves six so, hours to ourselves and achieving carbon neutrality. So speaking of carbon neutrality, do you know how many countries in the world carbon neutral or zero carbon emission countries? The Bhutan? Bhutan is, yes. Are there any more? Yes, there are seven or eight. I also can't remember, but Suriname is one. Mm -hmm. And Gabon is one. Panama? Panama is one, Madagascar is one, there are seven or eight. Okay. So yes, so you can uh, achieve uh, carbon neutrality. Tree plant, you can plant trees like uh, our colleague is doing in uh, uh, Anuradhapura. Yes, and you can change your dietary plans. Become a vegetarian. Yes, become a vegetarian. vegetarian. Maybe you know the beef is has the highest carbon footprint. I, I, me too. But mm -hmm. still, so dietary changes yes. it it can help for the environmental as well, and we are raising the awareness like yes. we, do. we do. Yes, and doing the research. research. Yes. So, as we conclude. Uh, it's clear that the healthcare has an uh, environmental impact. But the good news is small changes in our daily practices can make a big difference. By reducing waste in operating theatres, advocating for sustainable sourcing, and following six hours, we can create a healthier planet and a healthier communities. Uh, so keep in mind every effort counts. Together we can uh drive a meaningful change. So it starts today. Thank you for your commitment and dedication for a sustainable. So uh thank you for your commitment and uh, dedication for a sustainable tomorrow. Thank you very much. Any questions? We invite questions from the audience and uh, anybody joining online. Yeah. That 5 ml, give it back to the patient so that will get degraded rather than going into the environment. Whether it is recommended, I just want to clarify. Say, when you break 20 ml vial, say if you are using only 15 ml, the rest 5 ml, you back to the patient, not at the induction. I mean, Samya. Later, I read it somewhere, one of the, I mean, one of the recommendations. There are like, uh, there are like three things that you They have found, uh, so uh, when, when you like uh, that, the uh, uh, yeah. yeah. uh, can you hear me, madam? Okay, so uh, there's something called degluconization, mm -hmm. madam, of the yeah. uh, uh, proper form. So sometimes when you like, uh, uh, uh give the proper fall to a patient and when the waste products goes to a uh, uh, environment and they have found uh, leaving the, the uh, met metabolites and the after deglucorization uh, uh, the waste products leaving that uh, chemical the what you call that uh, 
different ideated products. Yes. And then we remain in the environment longer than the proper found itself. Sure. Yes. <laughs> and the, then, then they deglucuride. And then they release to the environment again, madam. So they have found actual propofol released to the environment is a bit uh, uh, actual. It's uh, higher. Then it comes to the environment. Yes, the, the base, the propofol that we make up. Yes. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the uh, glucuronide amount, uh, when it comes to the environment, they deglucronide again and propofol comes into the environment. What the point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The question was like, you yeah. can give the, 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 the situation. Yes. <laughs> the situation, yes. No, no, it, earlier it was recommended somewhere, yes. you know, down yes. the line. Now so, they must have found mm -hmm. out the rest. Yes. So, so, how long can you keep that remaining propofol in the? theater or fridge or do you I recommend that? I'm not sure about that. Do you recommend that or not? Madam, I'm not sure about that. Same day. Oh. Same day. Yes. Uh, and the other thing, if you are, if you no, no, if you but up, what you said was quite true. I mean, yeah. people break. Yeah. One point a while and, you know, they start rest. Yes. But yes, yeah, right. <laughs> The other thing is uh, if you take uh, like glasses and other things also like uh, you have like the uh, production, uh, the raw materials and other things also. What actually that we share between the not always, Anjali, you know. <laughs> yes. We try to most of the time. Huh? If you are using 50 ml vial, more yeah. economical for a yes. list. list. So you, you it's actually cheaper. Without yeah. like uh, the contaminating in between patients. I think out of all low flow anesthesia. Low flow anesthesia. It's not yet, you know. Yes. You know, it's not universal in Sri Lanka, I must say. Yes. yes. Now, nowadays, it is less used because we don't have this. Most of the monitors are not having uh, agent monitoring. <laughs> but still, you can go for less than yes, maybe two liters, even um, if you don't have, yes. you know, that, that is the, you know, the, if you take the waste, yeah. I mean, and plus, as you said, I mean, you, you break everything, you are not using even surgical instruments. Yes. You may have seen they open up everything, but they, they use only three or four instruments, no? Yes. And then you pack again, again pack again, and sterilization. Are there any more comments from the audience? Anybody joining online can make uh, comments through the chat, Zoom chat, and our speakers will get back to you. If not, uh, let's conclude uh, today's uh, event. So this was the sixth monthly clinical meeting of the Sri Lanka Medical Association in collaboration with the College of Anesthesiologists and Intensivists of Sri Lanka. We are very grateful to the college, Dr. Vinodini Manikasekara. Thank you, Madam, uh, for all the collaboration and organizing, President of the college. And on behalf of uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association, uh, Dr. Sarat Gamini Silva, thank you, sir, for your presence. Uh, I would also like to thank the audience present here today. Um, we are very happy to have you. I think it's mainly representing uh, all the anesthetists and uh, those of you joining online. So our next monthly clinical meeting will be next week, Tuesday, the 18th June, and this will be in collaboration with the uh, 
uh, College of Family Physicians. So before we end today, the main uh, gratitude should go to our two speakers. Thank you for this uh, new concept and uh, introducing uh, this new way of uh, conducting um, the monthly clinical meeting. I, personally, I think it was very interesting and uh, it gave uh, quite a new face to it. So we are very grateful for that. And uh, thank you for all your uh, engagement in uh, getting all the logistics arranged and uh, bearing with bear with us. Uh, there were a few technical glitches at first. So uh, many thanks to Dr. Dilrukshi Pereira, consultant anesthetist from the Sri Jayavadanapura General Hospital and Dr. Anjali De Silva, consultant anesthetist from the base hospital, Panadura. I would like to invite uh, Dr. Sarat Gamini De Silva so on stage to give a small token of appreciation to our two speakers. Um, let me thank the two speakers and the College of Anesthesi Anesthesiologists. Um, this is the first time I have listened to a conversation, presentation like this. And uh, because this is the time I usually have a nap and I was quite awake. But this confirms the thing that we knew all along. Best way to keep awake is to listen to two, two people chatting to each other, eavesdropping his what is useful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think we can safely say the anesthetist kept us awake today instead yes. of this. Yes. <laughs> right. So many thanks to you, sir, once again. And many thanks to all of you who joined us in person and online. And we hope to see you at our next council, the next uh, monthly clinical meeting of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. Uh, just one small uh, information. Uh, the participants who are physically present here today will be getting CPD points and we will be forwarding you your certificate individually made. Um, so there are three registers uh, to please mention your name, one for the college, one for the CPD points and one for SLMA. So please uh, mention your name and details clearly in all three. Thank you very much. Have a pleasant day. Sorry, just one. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to uh, take one minute for your time and uh, I would like to thank you, sir, uh, Dr. Sarat Kamini De Silva, uh, for your kind uh, words at the introduction and after that, and Dr. Harini Fernando, uh, from your uh, for your help from the beginning and to the end, and Madam Vino Dinivanigasekara from our college uh, for giving us this opportunity to do the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.